and welcome to Ask the Accountant Pit Stop podcast here at FAB. And today we have a nice little guest with us. We have Jack here. And I'm really excited about this one because for me, I feel like you're one of the people who has come along and you've been able to show how accountancy can be done. There's a, definitely a new approach to what you're doing here, which I'm, we definitely need to talk about. So first of all, talk to the camera, tell everyone who you are, why, why people should be interested in you, what you do, a little bit about your, your new business venture. Yeah, so Jack Moore, I run now what is called my finance function. Um, we aren't a traditional accountancy practice, as I said before, so we are doing things a bit differently. Um, so I've spent nearly 15 years in the accountancy industry in, pra in practice, and I've gone from, you know, I was, I was a partner at a firm in Nottingham before, and I had 100, 150 clients to look after. And got to the stage where I realized, actually, I didn't really know anything about any of those businesses, and I could allocate so little time to them throughout the year. I really wasn't delivering any any value other than making sure the accounts and tax returns were filed on, on time and, and whatnot. So we started sort of, a small team of us started building sort of a blueprint for a different kind of a different kind of model love it whereby we can basically replicate to add more value one of the ways i think we can add more value is by well first of all we can we can save them quite a bit of money in the way yeah, yeah. we do things um, but also giving them more insight than they would get from for this for a business this is from from their accounts people they would have in-house because i think people move from practice to industry and go and work for a business and they lose their technical skills over the years and things yeah, like yeah. that we basically operate a finance function, outsource finance function for small businesses. So we are practice accountants and everything that we do is underpinned by practice, by a practice and accountant and their, te yeah, their yeah. technical skill set. But we deliver it in such a way that the clients get full service from us. And I love if, it. If you go to a practice accountancy as a small business and say, can you operate my finance function? They'll say, absolutely, yes, we can. They'll charge you X thousands of pounds per, per month for doing it and then they just won't deliver. Yeah. Um, Whereas we've got the, the model that we operate is such that we can deliver and we are delivering that. But, I love that. So that's how we do it. And that's how we do it. I love it. Yeah. And, and it's got to be said, though, from your point of view, surely, that you've then got a much more enjoyable like job, right? Like you said there, you had X amount of clients, whatever the number was, 150 odd clients. But from your point of view, it was very much a case of you were just ticking over making sure the things tits. get done. Yeah. That's it. And, Whereas, and, 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 and tell us now, like how, how much more rewarding is it? Oh, it's so much more rewarding. Everything that we do is genuinely proactive. And you hear that word a lot in this industry. You know, we're proactive accountants, but not 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 really. Yeah. Everything that I've always done has always been reactive. It's always been work to deadline. And sh like We need to get things done by X date and it'll always get done as late as possible. But genuinely, the amount of time that we have to give our clients means that we can be proactive and think as if we were working for that business. Um, and if we were the finance director for this business, what sort of, what sort of intel, what sort of insight yeah. would we be yeah. giving the business owners? And we can do that because of the time we have to deliver it. Yeah. And you're also, because you've got still a pulse on the industry, you've still got multiple clients to, to look at and everything else. And yeah. you come to events like this, you can still go, actually, there's a maybe a clever bit of tech or a different workflow or some efficiency here that means yeah. that you can actually efficiently do that work for them and not get stuck into a grind, which unfortunately is what happens to a lot of them internally, right? Yeah. They, they They've done it x way for x amount of time where you can come along and go oh I, there's this section of this workflow you need doing but we've done this quite well over here and let's replicate it and bring it through so well that's it. That's, solving isn't it well that's what you come to events like this for because it's not you know you've you've got set systems and set processes but that doesn't mean that forever they're going to be the best ways to the best ways to operate yeah, yeah. Uh, especially where any function is concerned but finance function being one of those one of those places where you can find new efficiencies as new tech comes to market um so we've been looking at um you know, Apron today, for example, and potentially that's that's a uh, replacement for Dex. Maybe I don't know. We use Dex at the moment, but, but yeah, it, yeah. it could be with then with the new features they've got. And you kind of need to, like you said, have your finger on the pulse in this industry because tech moves so quickly, right? Yeah. So like something, exactly. you know, this this year's this year's product, this year's hot product isn't going to be next year's hot product. So um, that's you know, coming here is is invaluable for us just to make sure that we're aware of you know aware in a to a small extent of everything that's going on in the market and then if there's anything that we think we could actually look do with looking at that into more detail we can then go and look at it in more detail i love that right so you've mentioned about this event we're here at fab 2024 the inaugural event very different event right like this is not what we're maybe not what we're used to but definitely a a unique event that, that's good to see but what what's your first impression so far what what stands out to you about this particular event it's very relaxed I feel like you can kind of turn up, you can speak with vendors, you can chat with people in your network, or you can go and listen to some of the events, uh, some of the some of the talks that, they, that they've got on. So you can pick and choose, you know, what you want your day to look like, really. And there are quite a lot of vendors here compared with some yeah. of those sort of roadshow events that we've been to recently and stuff. Outside of 
Account X um, and some of the bigger events. There's, there's there are quite a few vendors, quite quite a few vendors there, and quite a good quite a good mix as well. So I think it's a really relaxed event. Pick your, pick and choose your day however you, however you want it, structure it so that you can get whatever you want out of it. And um, yeah, so far it's been it's been insightful for us, if nothing else. So. Yeah, certainly has, certainly has. Okay, so what are you most looking forward to today then? What what was the reason that you chose FAB over one of the other events, or are you just going to go to all of them? What what what? Um, What's well, about mean, this event that's intriguing? Well, we've you? never, I, I'd never seen it, I heard of it before. So I think I heard that it's sort of it's accounting, accounting web, or it's a, yeah, yeah. A, it's, yeah. it's part of accounting web. So yeah, we'd never seen it before. So we've done all the others: Accountex, Digital Accountancy Show, QBO, ZeroCon, um, all of those. And I thought, you know, we'll do something different, see what the structure of this is like, and see if it's worthwhile doing. And then perhaps we'll come again next year. So really, because we've not done it before. Yeah, and it's um, pretty much on your doorstep, right? Like that's got to be a nice right part of straight it. down the M42 hour and a bit to get here yeah easy to get to so yeah no no stress no drama um and it's free yeah free event yeah and there's plenty here so any courage to bring your team like you have done which is yeah. it's good to see okay so how do you take action from this event though so not may necessarily maybe from this event but you've already said you're going to be talking to likes of apron you're going to be talking to other vendors you're going to maybe come to some of these uh speaking spots over here what do you take out how how do you make sure that you do take away from this what you need to and, and action it because that's the important thing yeah right? it's always quite difficult because it's quite easy to sit there and say we're going to implement this we're going to implement this and everybody would love to do that but you have to be realistic and what's going to happen is the more sort of touch points you have with with you know apron for example yeah. if we want to switch from day yeah. to apron we need multiple touch points until we get to the stage where you think you know what okay fine we're going to trial that product so i think it's just another couple of touch points here and there for the the softwares and products that we might end up end up using not saying we're going to go away and implement things you know T tomorrow morning um, because that never that never happens so let's be realistic um but it's you know being in touch with these with these providers and then it'll give us something to think about and then perhaps next time we'll see them at, a, a, at an event and if we've not implemented their, their product by that time perhaps it, you know another, yeah. another keep you accountable point. right yeah, at that exactly. point. yeah, yeah. so yeah it's, it's just to give us some options and then we can go away and try and you know if there's something that stands out and absolutely next week we need to go and we need to have this product um, then we can at least do that. We've, you know, we've spoken with an account manager here, who, so we've then got a contact for the for that for that product, uh, and it can sort of we can sort of take it from take it from there. I love it, love it. I think that's the right way to do it. Okay, what do you think of the UK account and event space at the moment? We've got you've already mentioned a lot of them, Daz, um, yeah, account there, is. there is. Do you think there needs to be more? Do you think there's too many? Do you think they're rightly spaced out? Do you think the right place in the UK? What's what's your opinion on it at the moment? I think there are a lot. They tend to be London centric, very London centric historically. Obviously, you've got Accountex up in Manchester. These guys are now doing it in Birmingham, which I think is great because it's centrally, you know. Yeah. And I think that was a big selling point for them, basically saying you can get to Birmingham within four hours or something of anyone in the UK, something yeah. like that. So, um, yeah, I think they've previously been very London centric. It's nice that this one's outside of outside of London. Um, yeah, there are quite it's quite saturated this market now. There are a lot of them, a lot of competition for you know they're all vying for position in terms of where the you know come to our event, come to this event because we do this and come to our event because we because we do that. And there are events like Zero Con, for example, which we won't go to, like it's quite expensive. Mm, it's mm. 300 and something pound a ticket. And when there are freebies like this, that are very good events that genuinely you can get out of these as much as probably you would do from a Zero Con, go to these mm. ones instead. So that, yeah, there is a lot of competition, which means there are a lot of, there's a lot of choice now in terms of what events you, you go to. But yeah, there are loads of them. Yeah, it is. It's difficult, isn't it? Because they don't want to be oversaturated but at the same time. Yeah. There's so many opportunities yeah, to yeah, the think. Because one thing I'll say about this is I'll go to Digital Accounting Show, for example, or ZeroCon or, or QuickBooks Connect, yeah. whatever, and you'll find probably 90% of the people there you already know. And yeah. it's great to catch up and it's fantastic to have that opportunity to find out what they're doing. But yeah. something so powerful about going to an event like this and 60% of the people here, I have no idea who they are. And that's great, right? Like, that's an opportunity to... Talk to someone new, figure it out. So yeah, I think yeah. there's definitely a space for an event like this. And yeah, we because we, the location, I think. I, you know, I think you're right. A lot of people don't want to travel to London, so it's great there's in Birmingham. Yeah, exactly right. So go on then. Talk to me about what do you love about this industry? What is that reason that you have fire in your belly for this industry? What 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 keeps you? What gets you up in the morning? I, I think if I was owning, if if I owned my own business, which I do, obviously in accounting, but if I owned a business as like you know one of the sort of clients that we work with. For me, my mind would be in finances all the time because I think it's it's, it's kind of key. You need yeah, yeah. you know you need to know where your finances are as as a business. So for us to be able to deliver total financial oversight for our businesses that we that we work with, I think for me that's what drives that's what drives what what, what we do. Um, this industry of ours is plagued by 
slow responses, lack of communication, you know, and the, with the tech that we have now, there's just, there's no excuse for it. I think yeah. there's, kind of, there's kind of always been solicitors and accountants and solicitors is now still kind of up here in, in, in terms of their, how people perceive them as a service and accountants have, have sort of slipping. So for me, motivation is to sort of help us, you know, move yeah, back, bridge move that back gap. Up, yeah, yeah. Bridge, bridge that yeah. gap. So that's what, that's what sort of drives, drives me. I love that. Yeah. I mean, maybe you've already answered, but what is the part about the industry you don't like though what is the bit that it's, really frustrates it's, prob it's probably that i think we're a very old-fashioned industry or the perception yeah. of accountancy is very old-fashioned still i think we need to change that because we're not like you know the teams i've worked with over the last 15 years have all been very you know largely very young teams we've you know we bring grads through and we train them and we give them a career path and we help them grow and develop and people think of accountants as sort of 56 year 60 year old white hair briefcase and gray suit kind of kind of yeah, guys but, do, do. Um, but it's just not like that so uh, yeah the, the one the one thing would be that i think we are sort of plagued with that reputation which we can a lot of us are going some way to fix in uh, yeah but it whatever. hampers our growth right as an industry it does doesn't it so. yeah i think so yeah it's, it's hard with the same brush yeah so. exactly so talk about your tech stat then so this is a piece of equipment maybe a piece of software maybe a, a new solution, whatever it's going to be, but something maybe in the last year, mm. let's put it there, that you have basically gone, has changed the game for you, been a complete game changer, the way you either run your practice or help your staff or help your clients. Is there anything out there that you would just say is like that number so one? I think, so for us, the, the big thing that we've implemented that I've never really had a handle on before is workflow management. We do use Bright Manager. Yep. I've just been speaking to the guys from Client Engager. So this is something that we're definitely going to look at because they say they do it as well. And they've got, as well as Bright Manager, and they've got other, other features that might be useful yeah. for us as well. But so we do use Bright Manager, not saying it's a solution that we need forever for workflow management, but having proper oversight and total control of your workflows is just absolutely crucial because what we deliver, we deliver on a monthly, on a monthly basis. It's not sort of an annual service that we deliver. Yeah. So our yeah. workflows need to be we need to be on top of our workflow. So implementing that has been an absolute game changer for, for us. I love that. And, and I think all I'm like challenging the industry to do, and I know people are out there looking to do it, is that it's all well and good having workflows, but at the moment our workflows are always based on time or dates or anything else. Yeah. What we need those workflows to really be based on is our client data, right? Like yeah. how good or bad or indifferent is that client data? That should be driving these workflows. So. Yeah. I feel like there's a really exciting movement coming soon. And I feel like the more that these solutions talk to these solutions, we have, we bridge that gap, yeah. the better opportunity we're going to have going forward. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I think, I think it's an exciting time for workflow at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. And the tech, the tech will open it up. Like you say, you know, all, all these platforms talking to each other just opens up so many more possibilities of what you can do and what you can track and how you can see and have visibility over the, the data, yeah. data sets for my clients. And, and for someone like you, that gives you confidence to grow, right? And that gives you confidence to take the next step. And exactly. yeah, exactly right. Um, so how do you feel AI is going to impact you? If you could go a year in for, forward and you could sit yourself down here now, do you think we're too soon? Do you think that's going to play? Or do you think AI is going to play a part in your business going forward? How, how, how you feel about it? Is it just it'll a buzzword? Play a huge role. I think it will just develop and we'll just sort of build on the tech that we have already. And I think AI will just... I think what we want to get, you know, we want to get to the stage where we can take as many man hours out of the process as, as possible. And it's inevitably going to be at the bottom end. So it's going to be in your transaction process and how you deal with data. Uh, you know, we, we want to take the data processing role away, really, and have as much of that data, client data feeding in from bank, bank feeds and receipt captured apps. You know, all of that wants to hit the Quick, QuickBooks or the account yeah, software. Yeah. Um, as quickly as possible and with as as few touch points, human interaction points as, as possible. So I think AI will evolve. It's, and it already is there to some degree, but I think it'll just evolve to an even greater degree so that we take even more manpower yeah. out of that. And, and we're not talking about losing jobs here, are we? We're talking about no, enhancing re someone's job. Like, roles. Yeah. Yeah, so making you go, them even more impactful, and you move them away from being the data processor, and they are in control of managing managing how that data is is works, how those apps work with the with the data. So we're not talking about making people redundant. We're talking about giving people more. You can work with those people able to not work with more clients, but they'll work with them in a they'll work with the data in a different in a different yeah. way. They become more data validators than data input. They like yeah. data input. Yeah. Which I assume, and we can only assume this, but would be a more satisfying job, right? And that's, that's what it's thought, all about. You're not right? just sort of crunching numbers, you're checking and validating and verifying the data. So I would have, I would have thought that's positive for everybody. Positive for everyone, exactly, exactly. Okay, so we've got that camera, that camera, that camera. This is your opportunity to plug, plug, and plug some more about 
who you are, where they can find you, what you could help them with maybe, whatever, uh, whatever it is. This is your opportunity. Have you got any social projects coming along you know all that sort of stuff so we want to we want to talk you know we want to sit in front of and speak with business, like small sme businesses business owners who they might be on the cusp of needing to hire an in-house accountant not quite sure if they can afford it or if they if that's what they should do or if there's an outsource solution available we basically just want to say to them you can outsource finance in the same way that you would think about outsourcing hr or marketing which is commonplace now yeah you can outsource finance at that level, not talking about blue chip companies, you know, we're talking about SMEs who are, you know, up to 10, 15, even 20 million turnover. You can outsource finance. You know, you don't need to go and spend 80 grand a year on an FD and 40 grand a year on an accountant. Like yeah. there are solutions available. There are a handful of businesses that can do it properly. We're doing it really well. Um, you know, a lot of our clients are testimony to that. We've got testimonials from the businesses we work with. They think we're amazing and the service we deliver is amazing. And we are consistent in our delivery as well. So, so we want to sit in front of and speak with these businesses, learn about their businesses, see if we can help them, and then hopefully work with them. I love it. I love it. And for me, I feel like the theme of today's conversation from a lot of people that sat there today is all about disruption. And I feel like you're one of those. You're helping the industry disrupt the industry in a positive way. Yeah. You know, it's it's like opportunities like yours that are going to entice different types of people into the industry and people who are going to be actually really really beneficial to it so can only can only thank you enough and like keep up keep it up keep up i know you were you. talking about was it podcast maybe later down the line all that sort of stuff Is anything it that gets something to keep you yeah yeah something to keep an eye out for you know keeps us in in, in forefront of people's minds um you know i'd love to just speak just speaking sitting and speaking with business owners about their business their story how did they go from you know selling door to door to running a 10 million pound company like just having frank and honest conversations with those with those people a sort of podcast around that would be amazing kind of like steve you know Stephen bartlett exactly yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, that sort of that sort of thing just to speak with people is yeah i love it brilliant so that is it. This is our podcast pit stop interview with Jack. Brilliant. I've absolutely really enjoyed this. I think we're basically we're going to have to bring you on as a cool friend one day, have a proper deep dive. Let's figure out exactly how you got to where you've got to go. I think you've got a lot of insight to give to the industry. So really excited for it. So thank you so much for coming along. Thank you, thank you everyone for listening. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. And we will see you in the next one. Don't forget to follow Jack as well. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.